All right, and look at that. With the magic of video, our Spitfire is already back from media blasting. In reality, it's been about a week's time since we were last filming, but our Spitfire has finished being media blasted. It's been coated with a two mil coating of PPG epoxy sealer, and we've picked it up and brought it back here to the shop. Now, we're gonna show you what we've got working with, and uh, it's not too bad, but first, before we do that, we've gotta get this off the trailer and put it back on our body table. So we're gonna move this around a little bit. We'll grab the camera and show you. We're gonna get this mounted back up on the body table, and then we'll talk a little bit more about it. So let's go ahead and do that so we can show you what we got. Now, of course, in order to move the Spitfire onto the body table, we're gonna to have to get the Camaro out of the way. So let's go ahead and move that. All right, now that the Camaro is out of the way, and of course it was moved the proper way that you remove a Camaro from the shop with a little bit of wheel spin. Uh, now that we've done that, we can go ahead and work on getting our Spitfire body off the trailer and back onto the body table. That means we're gonna move the trailer with the body out and back in here. We're gonna lift it up, and then we're gonna clear the body table off. We've got some trailer parts on it that'll go back on the trailer. Move the trailer out, move the body table under, lower everything, get it bolted on, and then we can show you some close-ups of what we're working with on the Spitfire body. So let's go ahead and do that because I'd like to show you what we have. So let's get moving. All right, now we're gonna try to just leave it here to lift. I don't think we have to roll over the bump in the floor. We're gonna see if that'll work. If so, we'll move it. Uh, we can also slide the body a little on the trailer to get it even on the lift arms. But we're going to start here and let's see what we get. All right, so we've kind of got things staged here and obviously one of the more difficult parts of getting this lifted off the trailer is going to be carefully lifting the car body to get the lift arms underneath it. So Obviously we can turn down these outer edges a little bit. I might have to shift the car forward a little bit more still uh, just to kind of get things even, but it's not, it doesn't weigh very much. So I don't think we're gonna have too much difficulty um, if this thing isn't perfectly even and level on the lift. We're not lifting a you know 4,000 pound vehicle here. This is literally in the hundreds of pounds. Um, so we're just gonna try to get it as straight as we can. And then it looks like, you know, there is a spot here I'm just gonna look for some reinforcement. Do I have to put a jack under anything, uh, like a bottle jack just to lift it up a little bit, maybe with a piece of wood underneath? Maybe just enough to get our lift arms underneath. In the back, shouldn't be that big a deal because I can always bring the lift arms right under here. So they ought to come in good. Let me show you on this side. Uh, basically just how we had did it before. We can put the lift arms right under here. There's kind of a nice reinforced area right here where some of the sheet metal comes together. and. Fortunately on our car, it is in good shape. So we can get those set. It's the front arms that are gonna be a little bit more difficult and require you know, lifting the car while somebody's moving the arms in place. So I'm gonna get the arms close and we'll see if we wanna maybe use a bottle jack with a board. Uh, the key thing is though, I don't think I'm on camera anymore, but the key thing is we don't wanna damage anything on the car. So we're gonna be very careful. Now we can go ahead and roll the trailer away.
All right, so finally the part we've really been waiting for here in the video, we've got the body mounted back on the table. And of course, back from the media blast, we also have the doors and the trunk lid. So we're actually gonna grab another camera here and be able to show you what it is that we're actually working with. So let's do that. All right, so, All right, so I got this camera here and uh, I'll try to hold it nice and steady. Let's switch over to it and we'll show you the car a little bit. So let's start with, well, first of all, let's talk a little bit about the coating. So I mentioned that we t had this taken down to Media Blast and we had a, a, a coating of PPG epoxy primer put on it. Uh, the folks there said that's approximately a two mil coating and essentially what this is, is just to prevent it from flash rusting. So this was taken down the bare steel and bare steel, you know, depending on how long it sits and how much humidity there is in the air could do what's called flash rusting and get some rust on it. And then you've got to deal with that and take it completely off before you, you know, prep the car for primer and paint. Now this sealer is not primer, although it is gray like gray primer, this is not the final primer this would have to be roughed up before a primer is put on it. So again, the whole idea here is it's pretty inexpensive to have it done. Just have it coated after being blasted. This is gonna protect that investment of the media blasting that we put in. And as we do panel replacements and, and body work, we'll be able to, you know, when we're all done, scuff this up and get it ready for final prime and paint. So let's take a look at this rear quarter uh, to start with. This is the driver's rear quarter panel. And uh, as you can see, what we're going to find on this car is a lot of positive news and a lot of things obviously that need repair. So first up, you know, we do have this pretty nasty dent in here and this is nothing new. This is what we saw on the car beforehand. The nice thing about this car when I took it down the media blast was kind of letting them know like, hey, you can see the backside of every panel and tell that this car did not have any Bondo on it. Now the hood, if you remember from our video, does have some Bondo. That's the one area somebody looks like they started to do some restoration work on this car. The rest of the body was largely untouched. So I don't think they found any Bondo on this when media blasting it. So it's a pretty honest car. So obviously we have this dent in here. It's got some pretty serious um, creases. So this will probably be a candidate for panel um, replacement, whether it's the entire quarter or just a section, I'm gonna have to figure that out. Well, let's look at some normal problem areas. So the lower quarter, you can see there obviously was some typical rust and uh, looks like there's even a little bit of something still stuck in here. So this obviously is, obviously is gonna get cut out anyway, but you know, um, this is an area very prone to rust and all in all this isn't as bad as I thought it would be So yes, this panel is gonna have to have a fair bit of work done to it But this car I mean the other the mark II that I had uh, the body on that one was just completely gone I mean what wasn't bondoed and caved in was rusted away. This one has some really good solid pieces to it So that'll have to be worked obviously, but really, you know, if you ask me, it's not all that bad uh, the wheel wells look like they're in fairly decent shape too, which is, is pretty good. Um, this is obviously an area of concern because you know this is where you have a lot of rocks getting thrown up, a lot of mud and salt and everything. Um, so if you're gonna have some problem areas, this is definitely one of them that it'll be. And this really isn't bad if you look at it. So it's pretty clean. So I think this is pretty workable. And again, the nice thing I was, I don't know if I mentioned this yet or not, but um, the nice thing about this thin coating is that it, it reveals all of your spot welds pretty well. So I can pretty much see every spot weld on this car and I've got this protective coating. All right, let's look back here. So this is the back of the floor pans, uh, I think. Yeah, pretty much the back of the floor pans. This is where the, uh, I guess, track arm, track link bolts. So this is nice and solid. There is a little bit right here. Sorry, not doing good with the camera today. There is a little bit of rust through here. Um, but this actually feels pretty solid. And again, I can see clean spot welds. So this isn't looking too bad. So we'll have to decide what ends up happening there. There is a little bit of pitting on the wheel well here. Looks like there's a tiny hole here. There's a little bit of pitting here. So again, very, very workable. I think that this is gonna be a salvageable piece. I'm not really doing this to determine what's gonna go, what's gonna stay, just kind of giving an overview. That's gonna require some thought and review all right, let's go forward a little bit. So we've got our rocker. This is, well, this is the front of the rear quarter panel. And again, typical rust spot. Same with the rocker. This we were not surprised about. We saw this all on the car. This is kind of caved in and rusted out. So it's gonna need these rockers replaced. But again, 
here's the lower end of it. It's really not that bad. There's all the spot welds. I know, yes, it, it certainly isn't great, but the fact that this still exists is pretty compelling and pretty nice. So um, all in all, you know, I really thought this was gonna be worse off. So I'm pleasantly surprised. Now, a lot of people look at this and say, geez, this thing's all rusted out. How are you surprised and happy? They're pleasantly surprised and happy. And I gotta say, I've seen a lot worse on these cars. So I'm pretty happy with it. All right, let's go. Let's skip those floors where we're talking about being happy. Let's skip those. Let's talk about this area right here. So again, we've got this caved in area right here, which makes you wonder what happened if it fell off a curb or something. But something starting here just caved that in pretty good. So I'm not quite sure what that was. But anyway, let's move forward a little bit. Again, you can see all your spot welds along the pinch weld. And here, this is a, actually a drain hole. So that's not even a rust hole. And then we've got some minor rust uh, holes, rust through here. This panel is actually pretty good and uh, wouldn't be too tough to do. Looks like you've got your spot welds on, on how this goes. Uh, I don't know if this is part of the whole rocker. I think it is actually. So looks like this little piece kind of caps it off right there, as you can see. You can see where the seams are in the spot welds for that, but I think this piece actually is the entire rocker. So um, again, we'll probably go ahead and do that because it looks like it's going to need it. But you know, all in all, if it was only this, this would almost be patchable because this looks and feels really solid even up here. So that again, you know, I say it, this is a really big spot for picking up salt and rocks and everything. So these are some of the first things to go on a car and they're actually not too bad. And this all sort of goes back to my theory with this car that a lot of the rust that it has isn't from its life driving, it's from its life sitting, okay? So, so again, we, we learned that with this car, we're pretty sure that it sat for about 37, 38 years before it was brought in and started work done on it. So let's, uh, let's go straight to the floors. Let's talk about those. So taking that in mind, judging by how the rockers looked, how the wheel wells look and how clean they are, and then you come to the floors and the floors are just totally perforated and pretty well gone. And again, no surprise there. We knew that, you know, this, um, I'm actually surprised that they blasted these and coated them. I even told them, Hey, don't, don't worry about it. And it looks like they were quick enough to do that. They went ahead and, and did them. Uh, these are going to get cut out obviously and replaced, but going back to my theory, these pans, if you look at them, this is an area where it would collect water sitting without a top. So let me move the camera down. So imagine, you know, this spot, the lowest spot right here is also the worst spot for the rust perforation. This is where it would retain water. It's under the seat. It doesn't evaporate very easily. It sits and rusts it out more so than not. Even a little bit back here, you're behind the seat. It's just not going to dissipate as quickly. As you get up to this piece, this is actually fairly solid part of the floor pan. And again, that's where you're not going to have so much water. It's not the lowest part. It's going to evaporate a little sooner, but you do still have your problem areas. And unfortunately, we've got some pitting and holes in the support bracket here, which I was really hoping these were going to be OK. Um, they're pretty simple pieces, so it is maybe possible to repair those without replacing them. It depends on what we look at and what we want to do. This one's not bad. As you look on the top, the one on the passenger side is really a lot worse and it'll probably need to be replaced. It's got more pitting on the bottom and even on the top side where there's bolts go, it's pretty rusted out. But again, the front floor pan, you know, it's really where the water sat more so on the passenger side. Obviously it looks like the passenger side took the brunt of it, but you know, all right. So it's going to need some floors. That's not so bad. The nice thing is the back area is very clean. So there's a little bit of rust right here, which is a bit odd and a little bit in the front section too, and just a tiny bit of pitting, but it's not broken through on the side there. I think that's all going to be pretty workable. We'll take a closer look at it as time goes on. But again, the inner structure, nice and clean into the trunk, nice and clean and nice and clean here. The top piece, very, very solid looks very nice and clean. I mean, this honestly looks ready to go. Just maybe a tiny bit of, uh, you know, block sanding and, and uh, we might have a pretty good piece here. All right, we're, uh, well, we were going up to the front of the car, but we're kind of coming to the back. So, you know, it's wherever the camera takes us, right? Wherever the conversation goes. 
All right, the uh, trunk, let's talk about that a little bit. So nice thing, you know, here you can see a couple spot welds, the, this channel up top, nice and, nice and clean. A little bit here, again, this is where you're gonna get some more water and leaves and stuff building up. You're gonna get moisture staying there. That's a little bit pitted, but not rusted through, not bad. This piece, perfect, not a problem at all. Even down here, this piece is nice and solid. The trunk floor, I'm just pretty happy about. Obviously, the one problem area you're gonna have the most is right here. This is where you're gonna have water collect and not wanna drain, and sure enough, that's where we have some breakthrough, but uh, on this back valence panel. I was hoping this valence was gonna be a little cleaner than that, but all in all, I can't say I'm too upset about it. I think, again, a lot worse. And this is an area too that you're prone to have impact damage. So let's just kind of come down and look at it from the outside. Very prone area to being hit and having a little damage. See, like there's even looks to be a little bit right here. Let me crank the light up a little bit. There we go. There's a little bit here. It's hard to tell if that's just from, you know, where things mounted or if this was a little ding or something like that. But got a little bit of a dent right here. See if there's one on the other side. The other side's pretty clean where the bumper mounts. You can tell where the bumper mounted. Oops, I was off camera there. Where the bumper mounted, there might be a little bit. So maybe it had a little tap here or there, but nothing major. And looking up underneath, like I said, that panel looks pretty good all in all. There's a little bit of a dent right here. This is an odd spot. Makes you wonder what happened. Did someone try to jack it up there or something? There's a tiny little dent here. And then it might be hard to see on camera, there's a little bit of a dent here. So, you know, that's going to raise the question, is this piece something that we want to work with or do we want to cut it out and replace it based on the little bit of damage on the bottom? You know, right now I'm leaning towards it looks like a salvageable piece. It's original sheet metal and if we can work those dents out and with a little bit of a, uh, you know, hammer and dolly work and, and maybe patch these little pieces, we might be in good shape. Again, looking underneath, let's see if we can get the camera under there with the light. There's the up underside of our trunk floor. We'll come up to the top there, but again, looks pretty good. All right, so let's look at the actual trunk floor itself. And that's another piece that I'm really happy with. All in all, this trunk floor doesn't look bad. There's a little bit of pitting here. There's a tiny pinhole right here, but all in all, not bad, looks very salvageable. Inner structure is all good. Again, wheel tubs are just fine. This piece on the back the, uh, that goes over the rear axle and the transverse leaf spring look good. So all in all, very happy with it. Okay, let's come to the passenger side quarter. And again, this car had some problems with the rear quarters having damage on them. And again, another pretty bad creased area here. A little bit more dents and dings here. This light actually, I think, does a pretty good job sh showing some shadows. And then just dents and dings all along here. These are, these are pretty small. Look like they could probably be worked out. The hardest part's getting behind these panels. I mean, obviously, as you can see, there's a little bit of access, as you can see over there. But getting behind them is a little tough. So that raises the question, do you go ahead and cut the spot welds and remove the whole thing? But that kind of goes into, well, let's look at the wheel well. All right, this one's pretty similar to the other side if not a little cleaner. All in all looks good. Looks like, yeah, there's a little, nope, that's just flake and paint. So all in all, not bad. The uh, rear quarter here has got a little bit more damage to it and looks like it's still got some things in it. So this is obviously a problem area that's gonna have to be worked and done. And when you take into account this dent here, that's really leading this whole thing in the possibly needing replacement. Okay, let's go. Same deal on the floors on this side. These, this side looks even better than the other side. I can't see any sign of pitting or holes. That's good. This is, uh, what is that? A little bit of maybe seam sealer. It's still left behind. I'm guessing that's what that is without looking closer at it. All right, then we got our rocker on this side. Again, typical damage area. This is gonna have to get replaced. This rocker, again, happy with how the pinch weld is. It's not eaten up. There is some obvious damage though all along the bottom here so that'll more than likely have to get done replaced I mean I don't know if that's necessarily good the big thing would be you know if we cut this away and look inside this isn't a rocker panel's not just the outside piece there's an inner structure to it as well 
And if that inner uh, piece is good, and we can go ahead and you know seal it up and everything, then we might just be doing this outer piece, which is not all that difficult to do. And we'll do a kind of a close up of the floors here. Here's that piece I was telling you how it's chewed out here a little bit and kind of chewed up on the top. But uh, inside here and up underneath the dash, everything's nice and clean. Can I get a good look at how everything kind of looks under there? The structure of the, how the dash attaches and all that. That the hole back there would be where the, the motor goes for your, um, your defrost blower and your heater. Okay, and of course you'd have all the, some of the spots for the wire. It's kind of interesting to see where I didn't take some of the rubber grommets off are still there. So, you know, you take an entire car apart. It's amazing how many little things you leave behind, like that little rubber piece right there. We've got a rubber grommet. We've got these clips right here. Got a bolt that I left here. Uh, there's a lot of little things that I kind of left behind, you know, even though I quote unquote took the car completely apart. All right, and of course, problem area. Again, going back to where water pools is our battery tray. We'll show you more of that. Let me take the camera out here. I'll show you the upper piece of the dash. Okay, nice and clean. No real issues here. There is a little bit of pitting right here, but it's pretty minor. Again, this is all gonna be pretty workable. Again, nice thing, look at all the spot welds. I might, might have to dim this a little bit to see them, but spot weld, spot weld, spot weld. There's all the spot welds along here, up along the panel here. You can pretty much see everything. More stuff I left behind, these crazy rubber isolators or whatever they did trying to shim the hood. So that's kind of a neat piece I left, I guess, if you want to call it neat, but I left, the, of course, the plates back here for bolting the doors back up. You can see all the spot welds here. I'm very happy this panel here is good. Let's take a look at the front of our rocker. So this doesn't look bad at all. That's an interesting, I don't know if that's a defect in the sealer or, uh, or what that is. We'll have to sand that away and take a look. It's not really too concerning because it's more than likely if we're gonna do this piece, if we replace the outer rocker, it's gonna include this as well. And again, this one I think, I can't remember how the other side was, but might be just a little bit better. There's the drain hole, of course, and all in all, not bad. Though this one does have on the front there, this is where you get a lot of rocks kicking up and uh, salt and water and everything. So that's been eroded away a little bit. So this whole corner looks a little nasty. And the big thing is what's behind that as we pull that away. That is still yet to be determined. But let's take a look at the front piece here. Oh, we talked about the battery tray. Well, there's, there's, the, there's where it should be. There's the upper edges. Of it. We'll show you more of that in a second. We got something to show you there. But the uh, upper piece here, the one thing I really like about the Spitfire is how that whole hood clamshells open. You get a good view of the engine, but then you got this bulkhead and firewall and you see the whole thing. So when I look at, you know, restored Spitfires, one of the things I like is where they just go out of their way. You can do a really cool job smoothing these out and painting them and have them be real glossy. And that's what we're gonna shoot for here. I know it's probably not how the factory would do it. It's gonna be more than the factory would have done. You can see here in the stamping process, all the waves and everything that exist in the metal. You know, this isn't from damage that I can tell. This looks like it's just from stamping and being on the car. And uh, you can see a little on the floor pan as well, the way that that metal had to kind of bend in the stamping process. There's a little bit of signs of it here and here as well. So just imagine all of this, you know, of course we've got a little bit of pitting, but this is solid, all workable. This is where the uh, voltage regulator and the you know, heater core lines go. And uh, of course you have your, let's see, let me, let me put myself around and think this should be the brake, as, right? And this should be the clutch. So I'm twisting it around in my head a little bit. But again, you've got this kind of shelf space where stuff sits. And you know, if we can clean this up a little bit and we can make it nice and perfect and sanded and, and, and shiny and glossy when it's painted, this will look awesome in the final color that we choose. So that's kind of the goal is to make this look really cool. Interesting note, this is the same piece on the other side was chewed up here. This side looks a lot better. So I think we got more to work with there. All the mounts are clean. Everything's looking pretty good. So here's what I wanted to talk about. I'm trying to think if there's anything left to show. I don't think there's, we kind of, we did show up here. I left the grates in 
so they got taken care of. But uh, all in all, not bad. So um, let me pause a little bit. We'll go back to the main camera, and then I'm going to show you a couple other things. So I'm going to leave this running. All right, super quick. Here's the doors. A little bit of denting here. A little bit of dents on the door skin. Same on the other one. So I guess this would be the driver's side door. Again, a little bit of dents, tiny little bit of pitting. But here's the cool thing about these doors. And we showed these before we even had them blasted. Look at that. This is the bottom of the door. There is no rust whatsoever here. Even when you look on the inside, there's no rust on these doors. So yeah, there's a little bit of skin, you know, outer damage to the door skin. But the door themselves, the structures are very, very good. Here's the inside. Of course, we had these done and coated as well. So these doors are good to go. Okay, walk over here. Sorry for the shot being a little bit of a mess, but we just got the thing back. We're still organizing parts. Trunk lid, not much to worry about here. This is nice and clean, pretty much dent free. This is a really nice clean piece and it was done on the, on the bottom side as well. So again, nice piece to show you here. All right, so here's what I wanted to show you. We've been ordering some parts and this is our first piece of sheet metal that we've gone ahead and ordered. So I got this from Victoria British. I'm gonna see how their, their sheet metal is. And what I can tell you, it might be hard to see on camera, but this feels like a nice solid piece. I was really worried, you know, how thin would this metal be? And uh, this feels like a pretty quality piece here. I'm pretty happy with it. And I've heard some places use e-coating that you can kind of rub off. This e-coating does not seem to do that. This seems to be a pretty good e-coat. So you can see none of it gets on my fingers. So, I'm all right, I just had the cameras cut off because apparently I've been rambling for almost a half hour. So they, they naturally cut off when they get to 27 minutes. So anyway, I don't, hopefully we showed you all this. It lines up really well, but let's move it out of the way because as the pe first piece of sheet metal, it's also the first piece that we're going to work on putting in. And uh, I thought battery tray would be pretty simple. Just a couple spot welds to get out. We'd be able to get, extract the old one. But inter interestingly enough, it looks like these side brackets are here. So we're going to have to remove these side brackets in order to get to the outer lip for the battery tray. So not that big a deal. This, you know, four spot welds in the back. It's probably got maybe four or six or eight of them here on the side. But one thing that's interesting, I do kind of want to run by people. This piece, as you can see, is nice, perfectly straight. I would assume that this piece right here has had some damage done to it. First of all, this lip right here is missing. Um, if I can't buy this piece, I'm going to have to rebuild it. And I'm guessing that this kind of angle that it has is a crease and, and damage. So it's not easy to just, I mean, I can grab it and move it a little bit. But I'm assuming that I can see some visible damage. It looks like it was kind of pulling away a little bit. So I'm guessing that this got hit somehow and dented and moved. So um, now on the other car, I might have one of these. I might see if I can buy a replacement or I'll just take it off, bend it straight, and then it wouldn't be that bad to make a little flanged piece here to kind of cut and graft on. So this looks like a rebuildable piece to me. And, uh, but I'm assuming, and anyone can correct me if I'm wrong, that this angle is not supposed to be there, that this piece should be straight just like that. So that's what we're gonna do. So we'll. All right, so again, I hope you enjoyed this video. It probably turned out kind of long because we did the walkthrough and showed you the car and everything, but it's pretty cool because A, we, well, A, we have the car back, and B, we've got our first piece of sheet metal so we can start doing some work on it. Now, of course, as time goes on, we'll be getting more sheet metal and doing more metal work on it. We'll document that on our restoration videos. That's not quite all, though, because later this week, I am going to get another video cut We've got more stuff. If I get burned out doing sheet metal work and need a little bit of inspiration in another area, I've gone ahead over the last several months, I've been collecting suspension parts so I can start building up the rolling chassis over here. So trunnions, ball joints, all the various little pieces, bushings, hardware, all that good stuff. We've got a lot of it. I'm gonna grab the camera and show you what we have in another video. So look forward to that in the coming days. In the meantime, I hope you really enjoyed seeing the progress of this project. I hope for those of you who've been wondering how it's been going, you're excited to see that we've got some good stuff going here. So I'm excited and I'm looking forward to doing some of the work here and we're gonna press ahead on this restoration. We hope you'll stay and stick around. So remember, if you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Subscribe to Vortex Garage, you'll get all the updates. And oh, by the way, 
when we hit 3,000, we're doing a giveaway. So check out our video on that. It's on our channel. And uh, if we're not there at the time this video posted, it's coming soon and we're gonna be doing a giveaway. We're giving away a set of interior tools. So look for that. I hope you'll win it. And I uh, hope you'll keep coming back for more. So thanks everyone. I know I talked too long. We'll talk to you later.